Hi everyone, welcome to Paul Paul's Workshop. You know, even though it's September, it's really not too early to start thinking about Christmas and the Christmas gifts to be made. Well, one of the things that I did is I made a number of extra growth charts. And today I've been asked to put names on one that I had already previously carved. So all you need to do is show you how to do it. Let's get started. In easel, when I made these long growth charts, I actually moved to each section, and this is my X, Y, zero point. So I went ahead and zeroed that directly above my X, Y, zero point. And this is actually on the number four, and this is on my four foot line. And I typically put my names between that four, five, and six foot line, and that's what I'm doing today. So this is gonna be my X, Y, zero, the names are going to be placed right in this area and in this case I've got three different names. The only thing I need to do, in easel I went in and put a rectangle and covered up the ruler that I had already made and made that at a zero cut depth. So the only thing that will carve is the name itself. Now one of the things that I wanted to show you and I wanted to be able to have a disclaimer first. I did not have permission to use the names of the kids, so the names that I have here are just made up names that I put in for the demonstration purposes. So what I did, I just made a rectangle and put it to the zero depth so that you can see it will not cut anything. And then since the numbers were already carved, I just slid that over in place. And now the only thing that remains are the names. So if we come over here and be able to hit simulate, you can see that it'll just go do the carving of the three names and disregard everything else since that was already cut. So this is a simple way to be able to do a production run of the growth charts or really any product that you have and then you can come back later and add the names to it. Since I already have the X, Y axis located with the router, I still need to be able to do the Z axis. And to be able to do that, I'm going to move it from this point because I really can't put the probe here. And I'm going to move it up two inches and I'm going to move it over three inches to be able to go over into this section. And to be able to do that, I'm going to jog the machine up two inches, and then I'm going to go one, two, and three. And that's where I'm going to actually do the Z probe. Now then, I need to raise this up to get the height for the probe to fit underneath, and then we'll attach the probe. Now with everything attached and in place, we'll go ahead and do the probe. We have to confirm the contact. Okay, with that completed now, we'll take this, remove everything, and then we'll move it exactly back to the same position. And that brings me back to exactly where I was, but now the Z-probe is set as well. Let's start carving. I've talked about this before, but one of the things that I always do is keep a chart on how long I have carved so I have a running total of the hours that I have on the machine for this set of brushes. 
but I realized in looking at back at the videos, I actually never posted the chart itself that I keep. And I just simply put in the date, what I'm carving, the time that it takes to be able to carve, and then the total hours. It's a simple method, but it works real well. Okay, for the next project, I've got to make a whole bunch of coasters. These coasters, there's actually five sets, four in each set, so that's 20 that I'm going to be having to make. The good thing is, it's all the same design. So what I'm doing is just using two of the bump stops along with two of the clamps to be able to hold it secure. So the nice thing about this is I only have to set the X, Y axis one time and that's going to be right in the center. So each time I swap it out, I'll slide the new coaster into the place, clamp it down, and the only thing I'll have to do is set the Z axis and I'll be ready to carve. Over in easel, I went ahead and took the image. In this case, I'm using the floor de lee with a circle around it, and I moved it to the center. So this is my XY axis for the zero point right here in the center. Now as I start the checklist, the first thing that it asks is confirm material thickness. These coasters are actually different thicknesses depending on the color and the type that it is. But since I'm not carving all the way through, I really don't care about that. The material is secure. I am using a 90 degree bit, but because it's, there is no text in this, I'm going to, in essence, trick the machine. I'm going to set my depth to 0 0.015 to be able to carve that, and that will be listed under the other. And this will carve just fine, and it doesn't activate a V-Carve uh, Pro uh, day. So I'll select that, and now I'm going to go ahead and use the probe and set the Z-axis. Now the first thing I'm going to do is lower this down low to the material, and I'm going to set the XY axis directly where it needs to be. With that set, now I'm going to go ahead and raise the bit. Now with that done, I can continue with the Z probe now that the XY axis is already set. So I confirm the position. The clip is attached. I will make contact here. That's not a good position. There we go. So I have contact. So I'll go ahead and probe. Okay, with that done, we'll go ahead and put the Z-probe out of the way. Okay, the next item on the checklist, of course, is to set the XY axis, and that is already done. So now we'll go ahead and turn the spindle on. And we'll be able to carve. To carve this floor de lee into the kosher, it only takes about five minutes to be able to do it, and that's with the two passes. Okay, with that one completed, we just loosen the clamps, slide this one out, and we'll slide the next one in. Tighten the clamps back down. And now we're ready to carve. So now we'll just follow the same steps again. 
and we'll carve the next one and we'll continue this process until we've completed them. As I follow the checklist, it's asking to probe. We'll make contact and we have that. And the XY axis is already in position. People have asked the uh, speed rates. So what I'm going to try to do is include the cut settings in all of my future videos. But to be able to do this, 50 inches per minute is the feed rate with a plunge rate of 9 inches per minute and the depth per pass at 0 0.04. Now I'm doing this at a 0 0.06 cut depth total. So it cuts one pass at 0 0.04 then in essence it'll do a finishing pass at point zero two. Hi everyone, thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.